and the desire will push you to do action. This is how things do, simply. This is a very linear example. Now if you have knowledge, the secret why the names and attributes of Allah are the most profound is that your heart is designed to receive this knowledge about Allah. If once you start to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this knowledge will be set in motion. So it will become productive. What will happen? It will give you desire to be more obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you really understand how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you will start, your heart will give rise to what? Hope in Allah's mercy. If you really understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who forgives, straight away, once this information falls into your heart, what will happen? Your heart will generate the desire or the motivation to what? Seek Allah's forgiveness. Straight away, you'll start to hope for Allah's forgiveness. The moment you really realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most severe in punishment, and you grasp this information, your heart will generate what? Fear of the punishment of Allah. All these emotions, fear, love, inclination, will give rise to actions. Now somebody could say, okay, I could see a woman in the street, yeah, and I start thinking about that, and I feel the desire, but I don't do anything. So where is the, la the last step is missing, isn't that true? Can anyone give me an answer to this? Why? We said there's knowledge. Knowledge is something you can hear, something you can read, something you can see, and it falls into your heart. If it falls into your heart, your heart is like a whirlwind. It processes it. Once it processes it, the outcome will be desire, motivation, drive, love, whatever you want to call it. Okay? Drive, okay? But somebody says, okay, I saw this woman and I just, I was staring at her and I felt the desire, that's true, but there was no action. Where did that go? Can anyone explain this to me? Yeah, I want someone to explain more. Part of irada, how? Yes, yes, excellent, excellent. Do you know what it is? I said this is a linear example, this is one example, okay? Now there are other things functioning, there are other parts, other pieces of knowledge in your heart. So if you have knowledge of Allah in your heart, it is generating what? Fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if your fear and love for Allah that is in your heart, if it overcomes your inclination to that woman, there will be no action. The action will be for the force or the, the, the passion that takes over your heart. Is it clear now or am I speaking Chinese? I understand it's a bit difficult. It's a bit difficult because we never thought about it like this. By the way, these are not my words. These are the words of Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Al-Qayyim. I was shocked when I read that. I was really shocked when I read that. Now it's not in the same you know, order that I'm putting it now, but I'm just trying to give you my experience. or share your experience, share my experience with you. Sorry. It's in Arabic, and if, believe me, if it's, uh, there are translations, but they never captured the essence of these books. And even for Arabs, I'm telling you, uncle, we'll get you one. Uh, you, they find it very difficult. MashaAllah, okay, that's good. I mean, you can use any analogy, you can use any analogy, but it's just, you know, your heart is the, uh, how can I say? Sometimes my English doesn't help. Is is the center of of life. This is why Allah, the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah subhanahu wa taala does not look at your appearance or your looks. Allah looks at your hearts and your actions. The Sorry, the it's the microchip. It's the uh, CPU. Maybe. It's the CPU. Everything in your life goes down to your heart. Definitely. Definitely. So it's just, if we understand this equation, Wallahi, you will start to see why people do the things they do, and why they hate the things they hate, why they love the things they love. Ibn Taymiyyah has a very beautiful statement, and this will bring me back to belief in Allah and worship. <clears throat> he says, كُلُّ حَرَكَةٍ فِي هَذَا الْكَوْنِ أَصْلُهَا الْمَحَبَّةِ that's the formula for the whole universe. Anyone studies IT, computers, computer science? Who has some, some knowledge about this? 
What is the basic language the computer speaks? Binary, no, binary system. The, even the Java, Java, break it down, it's all that. Yes, zero, one, zero, one. Everything, every process in the computer, even the, the most complicated, the most sophisticated, uh, you know, pro, uh, whatever programs or uh, operations that a computer does, it breaks it down to its basic language, basic component, which is very simple. Zero and one. That's it. The binary system. Now, Ibn Taymiyyah has decoded, has decoded the secret of this life for us. He said, Aslu kullu harakatin fi hadha al-kawn al mahabba Love. But we call it drive, as I said. We call it motivation. We call it desire. We call it uh, inclination. Uh, we call it, whatever you call it, you can come up with different words. The whole universe runs on love. He says even a cloud sends its rain down out of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do the things we do in life out of love. So let me put the equation that we just did in different terminology now. Knowledge sinks into your heart, creates love. Love creates what? Actions. As simple as that. That's a linear example. But if you put it all together with, like, with the complex world in which we live, if you put all of these together, you, could, you can see how rich your heart is. It's a, it's, a, it's a battlefield. You see, we always use our terminology, yeah? It's a battlefield. Do we have something? Uh, Asha? Really? Allah must have. Okay. We'll definitely continue tomorrow. Uh, okay, I'll try just to find a point to close with. So, does everyone, roughly speaking, understand this formula that we just spoke about? Does every, is there anyone who doesn't understand it? It's very hard to put hands up, so let's ask the other question. Does anyone, ha, does anyone find it difficult to understand what we said today? Just this formula. Understand it, and you will see, inshallah, how powerful it could be. It could develop your insight to understand the behavior of different people. So it's what, I need someone to summarize it. Put it to me in three words. Sequence. Who can give me the ultimate formula? Knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge, Knowledge will generate drive, which is love and that will generate action. This is, you know, get me any behavior of any human being in any situation in any part of the world and you can break down their actions by that process. And then you will understand why people do the things they do. And this is what I mean by always hold on to the eternal realities. Don't be deluded by the contemporary or the surface structure. Don't be deluded by that. A father, you can see a father, okay, He's very uh, uh, passionate, loving, uh, he takes care of his children, he's very kind. But sometimes you can see the same father probably a bit harsh with this child. Now you could say that this, this father is contradicting himself. One time he's harsh, one time he's extra kind. But actually this harshness and this kindness emanate from the same point and the same principle. But it's just a different situation. So if we always break things down, so the action you see, always trace it back to its root, which is knowledge. Then love, then action. You break it, then so many of the things that seem to be contradictory, you will find them that actually they are in perfect harmony. This is why when someone comes to you and says, if Allah is merciful, why there are people dying out of hunger? Why there are so many wars? These people are de dealing with the surface structure. And the best way to answer them, break it down to them, trace it back to the root, they will have no answer to that. Hopefully, they